going to change people's lives. Here we talk about hanging up the cleats. Hi guys, happy Monday and welcome back to another episode of Hung Up Cleats. So guys, this week is going to look a little bit different. So with the busy schedules that me and Mary both have in the holiday season, Mary has a full-time job, I have college, I have classes, I just got done with finals. Actually, take the back, I have one more tomorrow, but by the time y'all listen to this, I will be done with finals. But in the chaos of our lives, we decided for our last two episodes in the year that we were going to do solo episodes. This was Mary's idea, and I honestly loved it because I feel like this will be like a great space for us both to give our opinions on how the year went and like how we feel about the podcast, and we both kind of typed out some questions that we want each other to answer while we're recording, and I also help. I also feel like it helps you guys kind of get to know me and Mary on a deeper personal level because you know when we record together we're kind of like feeding off each other and I love that vibe but now this lets y'all really get to know this and even though the vast majority of our listeners are acquaintances and friends and family members we actually did this thing this week um if you have a podcast you have to claim your account we just learned about claiming our account through one of my friend's boyfriends who like makes music. He was showing me how to claim accounts and I was like, oh my gosh, I have to show Mary this. And then I forgot. And then the next time we were together, I was like, dude, we have to do this. So we claimed our accounts and because we claimed our accounts, we had a Spotify unwrapped. So we actually looked at our unwrapped and we had literally a listener, maybe at least two listeners in every country, not every country, every continent. And I was like, that's actually crazy. Like, Brazil, Asia, Iceland. I was like, what is going on? Like, so for the people that don't know us and do listen, I'm Sophie and my co-host is Mary. (laughs) So basically, I'm just going to kind of give y'all a little backstory if you're new here. I am a senior, a fifth year at Belmont. I ended up transferring to Belmont, so I am in my fifth year. I like to call it my victory lap, but... You know how it goes. It happens. This is actually my third school, technically my second, but I like to call it my third. And sometimes you got to do what you got to do. Belmont also requires a couple more hours to graduate because it's private and we do have to take religion courses. So that kind of factored into it. But my mom was just like, slow down, like take a fifth year. It's fine. Don't rush. And I am already really young for my grade. So I'm kind of like ended up where I need to end up. So Basically, I started out at UAH. I was a college soccer player for two and a half years. I was there through the first semester of my junior year, and then at Christmas, I chose to transfer. So at Christmas, I was in the portal, so I wasn't like traveling and playing with my UAH team but my coach was nice enough to still let me practice with the team so like keep me in shape for like my next school so I was in the portal all of that semester I actually was not allowed to tell anybody that I was in the portal just because he thought it would create issues amongst the team because we had a crazy team dynamic which I've kind of talked about a little bit but yeah that was also a big reason I left UAH literally our whole team hated each other and had some bullies but that's okay anyways ended up transferring to Tennessee Technological University and I think I ended up committing in November I literally went on a visit and then a couple days later the coach was like so are you coming and I was like okay I guess I'm going so I committed to tech and one of my past like high school and club teammates already played there so I was really excited to reunite with her and play with her because we played together in high school middle school we were super good friends we still are super good friends but yeah I was excited for that so I transferred to tech and leading up to this I got time I got sick in the six months leading up to me going to tech I got sick a total of 16 times that was medically documented whether it was covid pink eye the flu or strep i literally had it 16 different times whatever it was so it was very obvious my immune system was down we didn't really know what was going on but i was like yeah that'll be fine like maybe it's just the time of year like maybe it's because covid's kind of fresh you know the drill so i go to tech i get to tech 
I love my teammates. I love my team. I love my coaches, but I get really, really, really sick just kind of out of nowhere. And I found out I had, I was getting blood work done like every week. I found out I had a B12 deficiency. So I was having to get B12 injections every three days. And it wasn't an option for me to take a pill because they were like, that's not going to help. Like it's literally so low that you need shots. So I was getting B12 shots every three days and I actually ended up having the best practice of my entire existence on a B12 shot. So that was kind of crazy, but I just wasn't getting better. Like every time I would run, like I felt like I was going to pass out. Like it didn't matter what I ate, how much I ate, how much sleep I got. It literally nothing mattered. No, no matter what I did, I felt like I was going to pass out. I felt like my bones were breaking. I felt like my muscles were ripping and like how you play like, really affects your mental health as well, so I'm just, like, my physical health is terrible, and my mental health is terrible, like, I hated it, and then when we were figuring out that I needed to be 12 shots, I, like, sat out a couple practices, like, this is a new team, new coaches, I just was in a terrible spot, but I actually ended up having to come home to kind of get some answers and figure out what was going on, because it was obviously deeper than just kind of, like, a one little doctor's appointment like I was getting blood work done probably every two weeks I was driving home every weekend to go to a different doctor's appointment and if you know anything about kind of struggling with your health issues you have to wait four to six months to like get into a specialist and then you have to have a referral and then you do labs and it's just rinse repeat rinse repeat rinse repeat over and over and over and that's the harsh reality of it but that's kind of what I was dealing with so I get home from tech and I go to a endocrinologist and he's like, oh, you look like a living, breathing, healthy 21 year old girl. Um, don't know what to tell you. And he was like, not everyone can play college soccer. And oh my gosh, was my blood boiling. I literally started bawling. I was like, I just had to retire, it was super fresh, and I was like, it's the fact that I played it for three years and woke up one morning and like physically couldn't run. The first week I got home from tech, I left my house and tried to run literally to the stop sign at the end of my street. I'm projectile vomiting everywhere. I'm covered in this huge rash. Like my feet went numb, they were blue and purple. Like my face was swollen. Like I had all of these like random things. And to this day, like, I physically can't run like all of that stuff happens like I don't know still trying to figure it out I'll get into that but that was the brutal reality of it so my mom begs this doctor to test me for an autoimmune disease called Hashimoto's and he's like "Mm, you definitely don't have it but like fine since you want to be height maintenance like I'll test you for it so he tests me for it we never get a call back we never we email him like we never get any kind of response except in the doctor's note he leaves like oh like tested positive for Hashimoto's like no medication necessary though this man wouldn't return our calls nothing like just ghosted us it was crazy so flashback I go to all these different appointments I have been to a cardiologist an endocrinologist any type of specialist you can name I have been to it so then flash forward I started at Belmont in August because Nashville is home for me so I started at Belmont and I was going to class and stuff but I just like couldn't really like do much like I like was enrolled in like a fitness class when I first got to Belmont I had to drop it because I physically felt ill every time I was doing it but we found out in February, that following February, like a year later, that I was diagnosed with a pituitary tumor, which is binary, so it's not cancerous, but yeah, kind of dealing with all of that, which is super stressful, but we will get an answer one day. I pray about it. It could be much worse, but in the meantime, I just have to do like not high cardio and like low functioning exercises guys when I get stressed I literally get like a stress rash so if you're watching this podcast and you see me like turning bright red this is a stressful situation so oh my gosh I'm literally getting a rash that's crazy but yeah 
So that's what that is if you're watching this podcast. So I love Belmont. Belmont is great. I definitely think it is where I belong. A little fun fact, though. Every single time I would come home for break from UAH, whether it was Christmas break or summer break, I would apply to Belmont just in case. I didn't want to go back to UAH last minute. And let's just say by the time that I decided I was actually going to Belmont and applied, they were probably tired of seeing my name. They were probably like, is this girl coming or not? Like, this is probably, I probably applied like six different times, maybe five. Kind of crazy. But having a podcast is very time consuming and it's very stressful. I feel like there's a lot that goes into it that people really don't talk about. Me in particular, I have struggled with balancing like my personal life and the podcast because obviously Mary and I want to be as authentic and vulnerable as we can with everyone. But you know, sometimes there's things you don't really want to say on the podcast. And luckily we have the luxury of we like edit our own podcast um mary probably edits all of it i've only ever edited two episodes but i am trained in case something comes up or i do need to edit an episode but that's what mary Mary, this was mary's degree sports broadcasting so she is an expert at it so she edits all of our stuff so it's super nice if one of us is like oh like I don't really want that in the episode or i'm kind of like second guessing that i should say that like let's bleep this out it's easy to edit out which is super nice but in particular like I never really wanted to talk about my health problems towards the beginning and like now I've kind of come to terms with it so it's easier to talk about I was ready to share that's why I did share with you guys and I feel like my relationship too like I recently I guess not so recent now got into a relationship and before it was I mean, it's been a pretty, it's been serious from the jump, but until we were kind of official and established, I never really wanted to talk about it on the podcast, so I honestly kind of, like, danced around it in conversations, and, like, you could tell it was just, like, so awkward, and I was, like, trying to, like, hide it, and I wasn't trying to hide it, I just was trying to keep it private, you know, I hated that, so here we are, we are officially dating, we've been dating a while, so I feel like I can talk about it, but... Yeah, so if that ever comes up in conversation, it won't be a hiding point for me. But that is definitely one of the number one things I kind of struggled with with the podcast. But I don't know. I'm someone having the going off that (laughs) having the podcast is stressful in itself. Like I'm a full time student. I also work at Lululemon part time. Mary has a full time job. She also works at Lululemon part time. But having a podcast is a full-time job. Like, I actually don't know what we would do if we didn't have each other to kind of, like, balance of, like, off of each other and, like, pick each other up when we're a little bit down or, like, come up with ideas. Like, we really, we really need each other, and it's just kind of overwhelming, but at the same time, like, I'm the type of person, I thrive in chaos. I don't know why, I don't know if that's necessarily the best thing for me, but I love to be overwhelmed. So having a podcast is literally like another full-time job. So it's like me and Mary have three jobs, realistically. And then next semester, I have an internship. So we are going to see how that goes. I feel like it'll be fine, but that's the gist on that. It's just very time-consuming, but... This podcast very much means a lot to me. It has helped me through a lot. It's helped me grow as a person. I feel like it's helped me get comfortable talking about my emotions and how I feel. But enough about me, guys. Let's get into the pod. Would y'all believe me if I told you guys that I literally recorded like three-fourths of an episode a couple days ago and I waited a couple days to record again and I'm like, "Mm mm-mm, we're going to scratch that whole episode, start from the ground up. I kind of was going to do like different clips and different segments of my day-to-day life, but I don't know. I just kind of feel like this is more authentic and vulnerable and 
it's a lot to carry on a camera all the time and like that's something that I would definitely want to do in the future but right now my life's chaos and I am in finals week I was thinking I've kind of been having like a little anxiety about doing an episode by myself and like been a little stressed and not in the sense of like worried I can't do it I know I can do it and like I'm very confident in myself in that point I'm less like Sophie like you literally talk to your phone you literally talk to yourself in the car like it's fine just like calm down take a deep breath and record your podcast so that's what we're doing so Mary typed out a few questions for me that she wanted me to answer so and she feels like these are things you guys would want to hear as well but we're just gonna give a little recap of this year so the first question was what is the biggest lesson you have learned this year so for me I feel like this kind of stems off of friendships so I feel like I've kind of had too high of expectations for friends and I just kind of set it up to let them disappoint me and I just feel like this kind of comes from like I am a very good friend I feel like that is one of my best qualities like if you are one of my close friends or like I value our friendship I am a ride or die I will literally go to war for you like I will do anything for you I will always have your back I will be your biggest fan and I just kind of feel like loyalty is something that I value most in a friend so it's kind of like when I don't get that in return when someone I'm giving it to or like someone disappoints me or like does something shady or like talks bad about me or like is kind of rude to me I'm just like feel stabbed in the back and I'm like what like I've been such a good friend to you like I thought we were closer than this and like I just have had to come to terms with that's not how a lot of people operate and I just feel like I've been there for a lot of people this year that have really hurt me which is fine but it's just kind of like growing pains for me like okay like you're not really the friend I thought you were and I'll get over it but that hurts and this is not about all of my friends obviously but there was like a significant amount this year but I just feel it almost makes me feel even more thankful for the friends I have in my circle that like I love and cherish so much because I'm so thankful for my close friends that I have in my life now and like the people I'm like close to and like they know I value their friendship like they're gonna listen to this and be like oh like she is not talking about me whatsoever but there's only a select few of them but I just feel like now maybe even more than I would have been if I hadn't been burned by other people and friends this year so much that I I feel like it makes me more thankful for the friends I have now like I feel like all of that kind of had to happen to like make me super thankful for my close friends that are loyal to me and do value my friendship and like Mary, we've talked about this on the podcast before, Mary's like, I want to be friends with the people who are defending my name when I'm not in the room, and I feel like my close people would do that, and I've kind of struggled to weed out the people that wouldn't, because I just have such high expectations for these friendships, but maybe it's a bad quality, maybe it's a good quality, but I'm also really bad at second chances. Like, once someone has wronged me, or like, not really done great by me like I'm just kind of done like I don't know like I think I'm a very like I said before I think I'm a very good friend and I just am kind of like you don't get my friendship like you don't get my loyalty like you don't really get me if you've burned me you know and like maybe that's a bad trait but I don't know like I think it sets yourself up for like a lot less hurt if that makes sense but another thing is when I first started dating my boyfriend one of his like first questions to me was who's on your bus and I've talked about this a little bit before but it's kind of goes off the saying like you are a reflection of your five closest friends so it's like when you're driving like who are your five friends in your bus you know I was like oh like I can't narrow it down to five and he was like oh like Do you feel like you're selling yourself short and like other friendships because of this? But 
I don't know, like, now that I think about it, I feel like I do, the end of this year, like, I do have five people in my bus, but I wouldn't trade those five people for anything, you know? Like, I feel like at the beginning of the year, there were a lot of people that were in my bus, and obviously, like, it got narrowed down, but I don't know. I'm proud of my bus, and I'm proud those are my five closest people in my life, like, outside of my family, and yeah, I just love that. So, guys, who are your five people? Who's in your bus? Going on to the next question, what is a piece of advice you would give someone going into college? Oh my gosh, this one hits so close to home with me because I had a very 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 tough freshman year of college like I would not wish it upon everyone when I tell y'all I cried probably every other day if not every single day my freshman year of college I'm not lying like I know COVID COVID was terrible and like I wouldn't want to redo it but when I tell you when we got sent home for COVID second semester that was the best thing that ever happened to me I cried of happiness because I could not wait to get out of my living situation it was absolutely terrible I was harassed and bullied by my roommates who were my teammates like no other it was terrible like I hated every minute of it so I would just give advice to an incoming college freshman as simple as it sounds just to stay true to yourself not to shrink yourself for someone else's comfort not other people's comfort I felt like I shrunk myself to kind of fit the mold of what people wanted me to be and I was quite literally dimming my brightness for the comfortability of others so I just wanted people to like me so bad like I had these mean girls that I lived with that treated me absolutely terrible and even though they were so terrible to me I would like pray for them every night I would like like I got them all cards for Christmas like I was so nice to all of them like I would try and like be more quiet or like do this or do that just to like get them to like be nice to me or like like me and just like whatever I did didn't work and this flip just switched and I just kind of was like I will never do that again I literally was losing myself to try and make these three terrible human beings like accept me and like me and I just will absolutely never do that again and I hope never I hope no one ever has to go through that but I certainly would do it completely different if I was in that situation, but yeah, just staying true to yourself, and I kind of feel like I talked about this with my mom a little bit when I went home for Christmas. In high school, like even in middle school, high school, elementary school, I never really felt like I fit in. Like I always kind of felt like I was an outsider. Like you never would have known that because I was kind of the girl that was like in a bunch of different friend groups and had lots of friends all the time and like was always busy but I never really truly felt like I fit into one group like I had multiple friend groups but I would bounce and I kid you not my birthday parties would be the most interesting dynamic of people you have ever seen it would be people like you would never expect to hang out but like they would all come together to celebrate me it was It was bonkers when I look back at it, but I mean, I wouldn't have it any other way, honestly, but I just kind of, like, took my, like, person that I really bonded with from each group and, like, took them with me through life, and, like, I still have two really close girlfriends from high school that, like, weren't really friends in high school, like, weren't super close, like, they probably would have been, but just complete different characters, and, like, they're the two that I talk to most out of anyone from my high school experience, but... I was talking to my mom about it and she was like do you feel like you would have wanted to fit in in like those crowds of people and like to a sense no like I like have certain friends I love and like lots of people I love but like the different dynamics like I'm glad I didn't feel like I fit in with that group of people because that is not what I would want people to think of me or like look at me as and 
my mom just was like, you're a bright star that doesn't fit in with the other stars. And like, obviously she's my mom. She's a little biased, but that was so sweet. And like, my idol was Taylor Swift. And she was like, Taylor Swift, like literally went to high school in her hometown. And like, she didn't fit in with anyone. Like, it's not a you thing. Like, would you rather be like everyone else or would you rather be like Taylor Swift? And I was like, obviously I would rather be like Taylor Swift, but yeah, so if you feel like an outsider, always kind of felt like an outsider in your environments, you're not alone. I'm sure there are many other people that feel like that, including me. The next question that Mary asked is, in your opinion, what is the key to a successful relationship? I feel like trust and communication. Also honesty, but I feel like that goes hand in hand with trust and communication me and my boyfriend we tell each other absolutely everything and have no shame and I feel like that really helps us understand each other like he's the first person I want to tell like if I have a bad day he's like the first person I want to hug and like cry to or if I have a good day he's the first person I want to tell like everything that happened and give him the rundown I just I also feel like a good balance of knowing I learned this through Lululemon but a good balance of knowing when to listen and when to give advice. So uh, we like have these things at Lululemon, they're called clearings. We do them at the beginning of every shift. And one of my bosses at the time was like, sometimes you just have to ask if someone wants you to listen or they want advice. And I feel like we, my relationship now like does a good job with that, but sometimes they want advice and they want your two cents but they'll usually ask for it if not you just gotta be like yep you're right like i got your back yada 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 but this is like not like my this is like my first like serious serious relationship i feel like if that makes sense but what is the biggest mistake you have made in a relationship that you will never repeat so going off what i just kind of said i've never really had a serious serious relationship until now i did date someone for about six months long distance when i was in high school my senior year and that was kind of the most serious thing i had prior to my relationship now i hadn't had a boyfriend all of college and i just kind of thought that was abnormal or i was starting to think it was abnormal i was I was approaching my senior year so since i hadn't really had a serious relationship all of college when i was approaching my senior year this is so cliche because it's literally like the taylor swift song i was kind of like am i the problem like am i being too picky is that why i haven't met someone so i kind of just like the next like nice guy that i was talking to i was like oh like i'll give him a chance and we talked for a little while and I just kind of knew from the jump it wasn't going to work out and like I'll never make the mistake of like trusting my lack of judgment and jumping into something just because I felt like it wasn't normal type thing. Like I felt like it wasn't normal that I hadn't really had a serious relationship so I kind of like wanted to jump into one but it's literally like God caught me doing that and then sent me my now boyfriend because my now boyfriend is literally the best and I'm so glad I have him I'm so thankful for him but yeah that's that so I just wouldn't jump into anything too fast and I just wouldn't do that again where do you see yourself in five years ideally I would love to still be in Nashville and working in the sports industry I would love to make my podcast a career but we'll we'll see how that goes you know um a year and a half ago I never thought I would have a podcast so who knows what the future holds but I definitely want to stay in Nashville and I just want to love what I'm doing so what is your dream podcast guest and what would you ask them so for a long-term goal it'd be Taylor Swift because I absolutely love Taylor Swift that is no secret And I can't pinpoint one thing I would ask her. I feel like there's a lot I would want to ask her, but I feel like I would ask her how she maintains such grace in such cruel situations. 
because she does a great job at that. But I mean, she is, she will write an album about you. I'll give her that. But she's just the best. I just love her. Like, I feel like she's such a good person who has had so much wrongdoing to her, if that makes sense. So I would love to hear the balance of that. And I would love to talk to her about dating Travis Kelsey. In a short-term goal, I would love to have on Brooke Roberts. Brooke Roberts played soccer at Arkansas, and she retired her freshman year, like, due to mental health reasons. I've actually never really heard her talk about it that much, so I would love to have her on the podcast and talk about that and just get to know her and her experience. I think that would be super cool. So going off of these questions, I thought I would include this in the podcast as well. So one of my really good friend Aiden's, he, for one of his finals, he had to interview five people in the sports industry and he asked if he could interview me. And first of all, I just was so flattered that he took like me having a sports-based podcast as like being in the sports industry because I don't really think of it as a job because I love it so much. It is like a full-time job, but the fact that someone else kind of looked at it as a job was crazy to me because I just love doing it. I I love having a podcast. Like I love talking about this stuff with you guys and I was just super flattered. But he asked me some questions about it and they really provoked some thought for me. And I was like, wait, that's kind of like what provoked me re-recording the whole episode. I was like, I love the questions he asked me and I think the podcast listeners would love to hear this as well. So the first one he asked me is, how did I end up in this position? And was there a specific moment in life where I knew this is what I wanted to do? So I answered, I kind of said, I gave my little backstory that I was a college soccer player until February 2022 when I was diagnosed with an autoimmune disease, a pituitary tumor. And this forced me to medically retire and abruptly say goodbye to the sport that had consumed my whole life at that point. I struggled severely with coping with my new reality, especially since it came out of nowhere. And I started my job at Lululemon about a month after, and then I met my co-host, Mary. And speaking of which, I just want to give a shout out to Lululemon because... I started working at Lululemon at a very low point in my life. Like, I'd just come home from tech. I wasn't in school. Like, my whole life was uprooted, and it literally changed me for the better. My coworkers are the best. I work with so many retired athletes. So many people had been through the same thing and just were kind of helping me cope with it and really being there for me. And I will forever owe it to Lulu. I just, I love our staff. There's something special about working for Lulu. And if you work for Lulu, you know how intense the interview process is. It literally feels like a therapy session, but in a good way. But basically my co-host, she played golf in college. We began talking about how difficult it was to face the new reality of life without your sport and how it's all you've ever known the identity crisis that follows and that's like what we talk about on hung up cleats but it comes with so many challenges that no one can ever prepare you for and once mary told me she wanted to start a podcast i was like let's do it so i created a campaign for my social media marketing class um named it hung up cleats it was originally a website where i just interviewed athletes that had retired from their sport and we just took it and we ran with it six months later we turned it into a brand and a podcast and it was the best but I would want to say the specific moment I knew where this is what I wanted to do was probably about after our third episode all of the attention that we were getting and the positive feedback we were receiving from athletes of all different backgrounds and like some people I barely knew some people I knew super well I knew that this is what I was meant to do and I knew this was the higher purpose for me having to retire from soccer earlier than I expected and I want to help others learn how to cope and give athletes a platform to share their stories and experiences. So when I met someone like-minded, like Mary, like everything just clicked. Like I knew that I was meant to do this. I knew it was my higher purpose. But his next question was, what does a typical day of interviewing consist of? So we usually do a lot of research on who we're having on prior 
um we've only had like a couple guests we each like didn't know on prior but usually at least one of us knows the guests so we kind of know what we're working with and give a little background but we make speaking notes um we don't really write a script because we do like write questions that we specifically want to ask and kind of talking points but I just feel like without a script it creates a more authentic environment and the guest is comfortable to speak their truth like we also like to throw in funny questions as well just to kind of keep it lighthearted after talking about something more serious or maybe even traumatizing but yeah that's that's what it usually looks like we usually record like an hour to two hours when we have a guest and turn it into a 45 minute episode sometimes longer depending on how much content but yeah I love it I love interviews I like solo episodes but I love interviews I love I love it I love it I love it I love it and then he asked I love this one what is the most rewarding part of your job so for me I think the most rewarding part is hearing people tell me that they love to know they're not alone I feel like Mary and I have built a community of athletes who want to vouch for each other and spread awareness to the mental health stigma around retiring. And I've had past teammates and colleagues from other sports teams tell me they listen to my podcast when they work out. And I just feel like that's so full circle for me. Like, I actually can't believe people want to listen to me for 45 minutes, much less when they're working out. Like, I had a friend tell me they listen to my podcast on their run. And I was like, you were listening to me while you were on a run that's just that's crazy to me but I feel like I felt like when I retired like you know you have to do four years at a university to be considered an alumni so I did like two years in a semester at UAH and then I was literally at tech for a month so I wasn't considered an alumni of any program and I felt like since I hadn't completed all four years that my credibility as an athlete just kind of flew out the window and I just kind of felt like I couldn't even really talk about that I played college soccer because then I would kind of have to give the backstory of oh I got sick or and then people have questions like oh like what do you have and they just it was super sensitive for me and it's not really something I wanted to talk about at the time and I just kind of felt like I wasn't even a college soccer player at all and I literally played for three years almost so it's just like that's a lot of time and a lot of dedication and if you were a college athlete like you know what you have to put into it so but I I learned like that's not the case at all like I am credible and there's more people that have similar stories to me than I know and this is real life and a life I lived for years so that was super hard for me but yeah that's that what are some challenges that you face I feel like some recent challenges that Mary and I have both faced is having the time for it because we both have super super busy schedules and like Mary puts in hours to edit like I make our graphics and then we have to record then we have to figure out what we're talking about We have to make sure it's something you guys would want to hear. We have to make TikToks. We have to make reels. Like, a lot goes into it, and we want it to be the best. Like, we don't just want to put out some crap just to put it out. Like, we want to make this a career. So, sometimes it can get defeating when we aren't seeing the growth immediately that we want, but the nitty-gritty days where we are feeling defeated make the days we're on top feel so much better, I feel like. Like once we like accomplish something or like have a big guest or like getting feedback we're like oh like thank goodness like all the growing pains were so worth it and it's just been such a process for us because I don't think either of us really knew a lot about podcasting before we started so you really just gotta dive in and sink or swim simple as it sounds but I feel like another kind of like a new problem we had not like a new problem but we did have a couple viral videos and we had a couple hate comments. And the first viral video, I was, like, reading. I have a makeup brush, guys. I'm, like, waving it around in my hand. I just showed it in the camera on accident. So, that's that. But we did get a couple hate comments on our first video. And I just kind of, like, stopped reading them. And I didn't read them on the second video. But there were, like, some nasty things being said about us. Like, we were literally talking about college football and the rivalries and, like, 
I'm a girl that does not know a lot about football, and, like, Mary went to an SEC school, and I'm from the South, so obviously we were SEC biased, and we just got drug through the mud on what we thought the best rivalry in college football was, but it's kind of like, who are we to say? Like, it doesn't matter. Like, we were just talking about it, but, like, hey, any publicity is good publicity for the podcast. Um, One of my friends told me that when we were getting a lot of hate, but... Another thing is, at the beginning of the year, I actually had, like, a girl I used to be friends with made a hate account specifically for the podcast. And it kind of, like, whether it was her or, like, this girl that she's really close with, like, I know it was them because based off, like, the super specific things they were saying. But that was hard to see, like, knowing that was someone I was friends with and confided in and, like, they know how much this podcast means to me just for them to kind of like attack it was just like come on dude are we serious like what are you doing I I hated that but it's like I'm over it It didn't really bother me that much it just kind of was like a seriously like we're really gonna stoop that low so that was kind of a tough one and then his last question was what's next for me so I actually just I talked about this a little bit I think but I just accepted an internship with the National Predators, and for everyone that listens to our podcast, you know I am a hockey girl. I love hockey. Mary loves football. Any questions you have about football, I'm not your girl. Mary is. Any questions you have about hockey, I am your girl, and I'm so excited for this internship. I really help, think it'll help with like my sports background and my knowledge, and I think it'll help me make good connections for our podcast as well, but... If you would have told me that I'm working for the Preds when I left UAH, I would have been like, there's absolutely no way. And even though it's just an internship, like, I am working for them and I hope to work for them one day. But, you know, if it's in God's plans, it's in God's plans. If it's not, it's not. So, guys, that's all I have for today. This is probably the last episode y'all will be listening to before the new year. Just to kind of wrap it up, for this next season two, me and Mary have some really fun and exciting things planned for you guys. We're excited about some guests that are coming up as well. And I can't wait to see how much we grow together and keep it going. Bye, guys!